T-minus two minutes and counting. This is the launch of the L-1 truss for Titan Station, which will be brought to orbit on the Saturn 9A launcher. Latest reports are that we can expect thunderstorms starting at 3 p.m. local time, and having that information well in advance, it was decided to move up the scheduled 5 p.m. launch by two and a half hours rather than delay it. So we are now looking at a 2.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time launch, this is definitely storm season here in Florida as Tropical Storm Arthur just managed to clear us in time for the rocket to be brought out to the launch pad. Uh, the Tropical Storm is now on its way up the east coast forcing people to adjust their 4th of July plans. And uh, storms are scheduled for the Cape tomorrow so the EDB decided that it was best not to try to light up the air with its own rocket on Independence Day. And I'm sure plenty of people on the east coast of the United States will also choose to celebrate early. We are T minus one minute. Right now it's very cloudy at the Cape, but we are still go for launch. T minus 45 seconds. T minus 30 seconds and counting. T minus 20. T minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, and liftoff. We have liftoff of the L1 truss aboard the Saturn 9A rocket at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, bound for Titan Station. While you might not think of a solar truss as a particularly expensive cargo, uh, this particular truss uh, came at a cost of $64 million, so I'm sure they'll want to see it get there safely. And we are at T plus 30 seconds, 1,500 meters in altitude, 105 meters per second in speed. The Saturn 9A rocket looking good as it ascends from Cape Canaveral today. T plus one minute, the altitude is 7,200 meters, speed 298 meters per second, now one kilometer downrange as the rocket passes the very heavy cloud cover here. T plus one minute in 20 seconds, 14,000 meters, that's 14 kilometers, 498 meters per second, three kilometers downrange. A little bit more nervousness than usual because of the weather, but so far the rocket is looking good as it passes above the cloud layers. T plus 1 minute and 50 seconds, 33 kilometers in altitude, 1,040 meters per second, 15.6 kilometers downrange. Two minutes and 15 seconds after launch, 59 kilometers in altitude, 1600 meters per second, and 38 kilometers downrange, and we are preparing for first stage out and second stage ignition. First stage is out, separation is good, and the second stage is lit. And we should expect payload fairing separation after the three minute mark. Currently the rocket is 105 kilometers in altitude, 2,080 meters per second in speed, and 96 kilometers downrange.
That's fairing separation. Fairing separation confirmed. So EVAs were originally scheduled immediately, immediately after docking, but they are delayed until next week for various reasons. So the plan is now to activate the, the truss and its solar panels prior to the EVA. A nice view of the storms on the East Coast right now as we have passed 182 kilometers, 2,306 meters per second and are 234 kilometers downrange. There are some waste heat concerns about this particular truss and it might be necessary to add a module to the end of it. It does have docking ports on both sides so it would be possible to add another module to the end of it to deal with waste heat issues and there is, there is some concern about that at this point. The rocket now at 219 kilometers in altitude, 2522 meters per second and 330 kilometers downrange. The, the form of the truss uh, is such that it extends the solar panels well away from the body of the space station, so it shouldn't interfere with any spacecraft attempting to dock. It's somewhat unlike the truss uh, structure on the International Space Station in, in that it holds the solar panels well away from the body of the station. Currently at 260 kilometers in altitude, 2,927 meters per second in speed, and 480 kilometers downrange. Still plenty of clouds from this view as we look over the Atlantic here. Doesn't look like there's too much relief in terms of the weather. So far the EDB has been lucky enough to be able to schedule its launches and have them go on time, but it's doubtful as the storm season continues that that will continue to hold up. The rocket is now 290 kilometers in altitude as the stage is expected to burn for six minutes though the Saturn 9A of course has a longer burn time than the Saturn 9 however the mass of Tress L1 is only nine tons whereas the capacity of the launcher is 20 so it is unnecessary to burn the rocket for its full length The next launch for the EDB is currently uncertain because the plans are to test the new Saturn C3X launcher, which is expected to have a capacity of 40 tons to low Earth orbit, but there is no word on a suitable payload. Understandably, nobody wants to put such a big and no doubt costly payload on an untested rocket, but the EDB is loath to simply send a dummy payload on a launcher with an initial cost of about 840 million dollars so but it might be necessary to do so as we see a simulated view of the rocket as we temporarily lost connection and uh, here you can see what the payload actually looks like atop the second stage of the Saturn 9 the payload the truss actually has ladders going along its length so that uh, making it easy for the Kerbonauts or astronauts to access its various areas as now we see the second stage is out and so we will await payload separation there is also ample lighting on the truss of course uh, no 
electric charge concerns since the truss itself provides plenty of electricity through its solar panels. The length of the truss is uh, 15 meters long with the solar panels retracted. We don't have a length on it with the solar panels extended, however. Still awaiting payload separation. Uh, uh, the simulated view is not available as uh, it is trying to reconcile two different craft now. And uh, here we go. As the L1 truss separates away, we weren't able to put cameras on the on the truss or the payload this time. So, however, we do expect that we will be able to watch the docking of the truss using the station's own cameras. So that will be that will be interesting to see. Now the truss is making a flip. It is turning around because as it was mounted on the Saturn 9A rocket, it was actually upside down. And that's because the fuel tank at its forward end is much heavier than the fuel tank at the opposite end. The fuel tank at the opposite end is merely meant to feed RCS ports. Whereas the fuel tank on the leading end is meant to fuel the thrusters that are now bringing it into its full orbit. So its initial orbit was 410 kilometers by 150 kilometers and now it is burning to correct that. With the L1 truss now safely in orbit en route to Titan Station and uh, expected to rendezvous in about 8 hours, uh, we thank you for watching this launch of this new component of Titan Station and hope you will join us for the docking and subsequent AVA procedures uh, prior to what is expected to be a launch of the Saturn C3X rocket, a test launch, uh, at an indeterminate date at this point. But uh, we hope you enjoyed this uh, launch video, and, uh, and with that, the EDB will be signing off.